What's up everybody, Rick Denham here, Holy Moly Outdoors. If you want to catch some nice resident coho salmon, just like this. That's silver, dude. There's our little resident silver. <laughs> Barbecuer! Then stay tuned as we explore some great tackle options that will bring you success on the water. Fish on! All right, everybody, so we are sitting in front of our table here, and I'm gonna bust out some tackle and show you guys a little rundown on gear for resident coho salmon here in Puget Sound. It just opened up this week. We're in the middle of June. Exciting times, because resident coho kicks off our ocean salmon fishing here in Puget Sound and leads to some really good fisheries just around the corner. So it's a great way to get set up get your gear tuned, catch some tasty, really good fish for the barbecue and set up for the rest of the season. So we're gonna bring you some successful stuff that I've used and it's really divided here into two categories, right? I would say lures that impart their own movement, which are these all here with the spoons, the cut plugs, some new stuff here. And then you got your hoochies, your flies that require something like a flasher to impart the action to. But to keep it as simple as possible, those two categories, moving baits, non-moving baits, and where about you fall into that is all preference, really. So what I like to do, we can start with the moving baits, is I like doing something that can, because these are coho, and you want to be catching these fish trolling at a faster rate. So my moving baits can go quick. So most people are going to be throwing some form or other of a spoon, right? Now, coho killers I have on the far left are a great one. These are a couple of our holy moly spoons. Do really well when the bait's small to match the mini here. Or if you just have regular size spoons are never a bad item to throw out there they definitely imitate a lot of different applications there but really that's all preference i run those behind typically our 11 inch flashers like this dick knight one here and uh you know 42 inches is probably the pretty standard but right after following suit with a spoon I came across these a number of years ago and they're always in my arsenal. These are Old Goat 3D printed. Old Goat is the company, but these are a 3D printed lure. They have a really good action that almost rolls like a wounded bait fish and then has, because of this lip in the front, like a crankbait action. So it'll, it'll dart around and roll. They really fish well. I've caught a lot of fish on these. Definitely a confidence one. For me, going to a little different action as well, but breaking out something from the old kokanee tackle box, I got a wiggle hoochie in front of me here. Now, smaller gear like this, I, I throw this behind a little bit smaller of a flasher, and this can do really well. Uh, usually about 36 inch liter, and you can see I got some extra tape and glow and Hypervis, all that stuff included, but uh, this definitely gives a very erratic action. When you're trolling at about three to, to four miles an hour, it's a great coho speed. I'll tip this one here with actually a piece of herring. Um, gives it just a little bit of scent added and does well. Now these others, don't even have to scent them really. Those spoons and the old goat work phenomenally just by themselves. Then next in the moving bait category, I'm gonna go with the Wicked Lure here. Because over the years, this has become a staple in my salmon box, regardless, fresh or salt water. And trolling in salt water particularly, this is the coho troller uh, that James has at Wicked. Uh, well, you troll these, we've done it at CQ. In fact, I even have a video, you can see the link up here. We were trolling these plain by themselves 
off the downrigger, out in the jellyfish, and whacking really nice coho. Um, and they work great on the, the resonance as well. You don't have to put this behind a flasher if you don't want to. It will work that way. Um, you can also run this one on a shallow rod with an ounce or two of lead right on the surface, and this will do really, really well. So that is a Wicked Lure. And our last category of our moving baits is what I would consider the cut plugs or uh, wounded bait imitators. Uh, like these are the mini cut plugs. This is a 3.0 size blue scale pattern. Mimics a herring or some sort of bait fish. Works really well. I found though honestly for my success with the sea run or sorry my success for these residents these we call them the kokanee cut plugs the kcps were absolute dynamite this one in particular the baboon was really really good for me um, and i've done a couple custom painted and taped ones as well that are uv and hypervis very successful for me and I run them actually behind one of these. If you can find them, this is a small mini flasher that doesn't have a lot of drag on the actual uh, rigging itself as you're reeling it in. You're pretty much just fishing and fighting the fish, not the flasher. It's called a kite flasher. Really cool, small profile. I love them with these KCPs. But there's a new thing on the market this year. Now, it's been out for a couple years in general. You guys may be familiar with the Spinfish from Yakima Bait. Now, they have the 3.0 size, which was their smallest up until this year. And it is a great size. And some of the colors they've recently come out with to be perfect for our ocean fisheries. This one's the herring egg color, which I really think is going to do well on kings and coho uh, as they come into the sound. But what they came out in 2021 with was the 2.0 and the 2.5 size. These small little guys, I think, are the most absolutely suited for um, our resident fish. Kind of just like these KCPs are. But these are a little bit different in the way that you can put scent and you can pack it. I really think these are just going to do phenomenal. Now these two colors in particular are what I would probably run most of the often for these resident coho. It's a black scale and a blue scale. Closest to uh, imitate a bait fish profile. You can throw a little bit of tape on it. Give it a little more coloration. But those are going to be definitely in my test uh, arsenal for this summer. And we're getting right down to the nitty gritty here as we transition. So our moving baits, a very wide range of different options. It's all preference. If you guys like to run stuff that has its own movement, these are great baits to do so. You don't have to constantly check your bait. You don't have to constantly add bait. Makes it really clean, makes it simple. Um, throwing a little scent on there. If you guys want, these Potsky new fire gels are phenomenal. Been using these for a while, and the herring one here, really just a little dab. You guys can throw it on the flasher itself. You can throw it on um, your spoons. Really, really a killer deal. And as we get into the lures with no action, it means that they have to impart their own through the flasher. Now standard, typical, here's your Yamashita glow skirt with an ace high splatter underneath. And this is the apple core color. Really can't go wrong. But that is a full size six inch squid skirt. Now again, as I said at the beginning, there are gonna be days when you need the full size to get those fish attention. Can't go wrong, little squid strip, or herring strip on the hook at top for extra scent is really 
a killer deal. Now this, I have to go back and look through for the actual color match, is my probably main favorite coho hoochie color. Has a little bit of blue, a little bit of chartreuse, super glows, works really, really well. But squid skirts aren't necessarily the only thing you have to run. There are some fantastic companies out there that make trolling flies. And this is one that I've used for a long time. Has some battle scars on it. It is from Olympic Tackle. And this is their herring imitation. Again, behind your flashers, it looks really good. Here's a candlefish. And here's an actual squid, both in a smaller size and a larger. So really, you can match the hatch, more or less, to bait size, to colors, double hook set up, just like I have on this one here. Works really good. At the end of the day, when you break it down and you start looking at what you want to run for flashers, like I said, there are 8-inch versions and there's 11-inch versions. It's really a preference. You can't go wrong. Certain colors definitely do well. But guys, find what you're confident in and just get out on the water and go have some fun. When you start looking at flashers here at the end, there's so many different colors. There's so many different companies out there. I'm not going to go too fancy into it. If you've salmon fished before, you probably have some of your favorites. Typically, what the way I look at it is if I'm going full size gear in terms of my uh, normal riggings like I would for Ocean Coho, uh, I'm going to be running my 11 inch flashers. Conditions dictate whether or not you need something that brings in that much flash or you can get away with using something smaller. Here's a spin doctor. Something a little different pulled out from our Great Lakes guys. It's got Olympic tackle squid on the back. That does really well. Again, I mentioned this before. Kite flasher, something smaller. Profile still has a big kick like you would for those others. Then you have things like this guy. Here is a top coat flasher. This is a really cool custom color company that really does some good stuff. This one is a larger size, more of a dodger that you can manipulate and bend to shape and throw a really nice squid behind here. You could even throw a wicked or any kind of your moving stuff a dodger like this can be really really effective closer to the surface as you got those fish feeding early on in the uh, mornings and evenings so guys this is a brief rundown of some of the gear definitely not all of it and forgive me there's just too much <laughs> you want to keep it simple out there you want to be able just to go out and enjoy it so pick something you have confidence in. I personally have really done well running the smaller flashers with the smaller kokanee size or tiny bait because you're not fishing on 10 and 12 pound fish just yet. These ocean resident coho are going to end up being smaller. So if you tone down your bait size, typically you're going to be able to get more enjoyment out of fighting those fish and more enjoyment out of finding them and catching them. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, we have a lot more on the way coming, um, but this is just a kind of gear breakdown of some newer stuff and really the successful things I've used uh, because I know there's a lot of questions I see all the time. So give us a thumbs up, subscribe below. We really appreciate you watching. And we'll catch you guys on the water real soon. Tight lines as always. And fish on. Thank you everybody so much for watching this video. If you want to see some more resident coho fishery content. I did a video last year on a tech tip 
for the specific fishery. So I will link that here on screen for you. If you guys want to see our previous video, please feel free to click on that as well. And uh, again, guys, just thank you so much. We got so much stuff on the way. Really hope you enjoy. Subscribe below, and we'll catch you on the water real soon. Tight lines as always, and fish on!